brain is a master connector, and most of us would say that's a no-brainer when it comes to mental and intellectual capacities, but when it comes to our emotional and spiritual connections, maybe we're not so sure. What's going on in the brain then? Looking at the brain as a social organ can give us important clues, especially when we look at how the brain first becomes attuned to other brains, when, if you will, it becomes connected to other brains. Hi, my name is Ruth Bozinski, and I'm a licensed psychologist and president of the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavioral Medicine, known informally as NICABM. Research shows that brains impact each other as soon as we are born, and those early social signals continue throughout our lives. Listen as Dr. Lou Casalino tells us about the earliest social brain connection, the relationship between the baby's amygdala and the parent's prefrontal cortex, where the process of mirroring restores regulation. Dr. Casalino is the author of The Neuroscience of Psychotherapy, and also of the neuroscience of human relationships. So really you are looking at the brain as a social organ. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that's the reason why we've had we have so much trouble studying the brain or understanding the brain from a Western medical model of science is that researchers take brains, individual brains, and analyze them and scan them and dissect them. But brains are social organs and can only really be understood when they're connected to other brains. So in a sense, it harkens back to the, uh, to, to the field of psychoneuroimmunology and the role of relationship and health. It harkens back to family, th family therapy and systems therapy of the 50s and 60s that looked at the individual pathology as an expression of dysregulation in the family system. Um, it's, it's a constant fight because the default mode in our culture is individual brains with technological solutions to problems. I, I can see where it, the way we've looked at the brains in the past, focusing on the, the individual brain, almost assuming that we can find some normal brain and, and just study that in an aggregate, but as an isolated entity, just really doesn't work when you look at it from the perspective of brains are impacting each other. Um, maybe we should back up for a minute and, and talk about the whole process of attachment from the brain's perspective. What's going on in the brain when the baby and the parent are going through that dance, that psychological attunement or lack of attunement with each other? Well, probably to start, I mean, remember what I said before is that for primates, attachment equals survival and abandonment equals death. I mean, it's also true for, you know, for most mammals as well. So what you have, even at eight, at eight months of gestation, before we're even born, we have a part of the brain, a core part of the brain called the amygdala, which is uh, the sort of the, it's the executive center for fear activation. It's fully developed by eight months of gestation. So by the time we're born, we're capable of being completely terrified, right? And you might notice when you, when you look at young children, when they have a fear response, it's a full body response. They're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a panic attack whenever they're, mm -hmm. when, when they're frightened. Their, their mouths open wide, they, their whole body clenches. It, it's a full body experience for them. Now, the circuits that actually regulate fear um, are, are located in a primitive part of the prefrontal cortex right above our eyes in the, in the center of our brains. But those circuits take years to develop, okay? And these, mm -hmm. and these circuits have descending inhibitory functions that control and modulate fear activation. So mm -hmm. early on, and you know, when we're born and for, and for uh, many years, many of our early years, we use our parents' frontal lobes, in a sense, as an external, as an external prosthetic brain. Mm -hmm. So our, we depend on our parents to be sensitive to us, to mirror us, to see when we're heading for danger or when we're upset. And so we have these experiences of getting upset. Our parents step in. They help us re-regulate whether we're hungry or wet or frightened or whatever it is. And then we go back to a baseline, to being calm again. And it's these thousands and thousands of interactions that we have over you know, the first few years with our parents 
in a sense, that provide a scaffolding for us to go from dysregulated state to a regulated, I'm sorry, from a regulated state to dysregulation and back to regulation. And in the process of all of these interactions where we're connecting and attuning and being with our parents, our sensitivity to them and their sensitivity to us, right? What's happening is that these networks between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex are slowly being shaped and they're modeling on these interactions with parents. So this is one of the ways in which parenting affects brain development. Neuroscience really is taking us to a new place in our understanding of mind-body medicine. It's setting a new standard, and it's giving us the evidence for new approaches that we can use with our patients. That's why NICABM has created a teleseminar series, The New Brain Science, Compelling Insights for State-of-the-Art Practice. In this series, you will hear experts share exactly how health and mental health care practitioners can use the most recent ideas of neuroplasticity and neurogenesis in treating their patients. The calls are free. You just need to sign up. There you will learn about how we can change the wiring of our brains, the neurobiology of mindfulness, the brain plasticity and depression connection, practical neuroscience of happiness, love, and wisdom, how the mind changes the brain, and the neuroscience of psychotherapy. Practitioners all around the world have been listening to this series. Again, the teleseminars are free. You can sign up at www.nicabm.com forward slash new brain science or take a look at our blog at www.nicabm.com forward slash nicabm blog. We hope you'll join us.